Um, I think to, uh, to, to think about uh, obstacles or challenges to adopting new endpoints in, in AML therapy, I think it's important, first of all, to take a little bit of a historical view. So in AML treatment, generally, we've been using the same two drugs for 45 years. And generations of hematologists were raised and trained on leukemia treatment based on these two drugs. And a few general principles arose. The drugs work quickly. You get a complete remission with one cycle. Uh, you assess response to treatment within one cycle. And if you didn't achieve a complete remission, you really had nothing. You certainly had no increase in survival and you had no improvement in quality of life. And so this approach and this kind of assessment to disease response, to treatment response was etched in stone. And the IWG 2003 guidelines, again, say the main outcome point is a CR. Ah, there was a lesser outcome called CRP. But as recently as 10 years ago, paper was, papers were published saying, if you didn't develop a, achieve a complete response, you really had achieved nothing. What's happened in the meantime, though, is with new drugs like hypomethylating agents and differentiating agents, it's become clear that these old rules don't necessarily apply, particularly in older patients. Uh, for example, in the older patients on hypomethylating agents, there's a striking discordance between morphologic response in the bone marrow and clinical outcome. So there's a huge discordance between over, improved overall survival, improved, improved quality of life, and CR rates. So for example, azacitidine versus cytarabine, the CR rates in AML are pretty similar, 18, 19, 20 percent, somewhere around there, but the overall survival is many months apart. In fact, the two years, there's almost twice as many people alive on, who received azacitidine than low-dose cytarabine. Differentiating, differentiating agents are showing a similar phenomenon. There's a few rules with these drugs. One is that the one cycle doesn't do the trick anymore, that you have to keep on giving the drug. Don't stop too soon. Um, the other rule is that uh, quality of life is becoming a very important endpoint. So what are the challenges here? The challenges are is that the regulators are trapped in the old, if you don't, have, if you don't get an overall survival, you have nothing viewpoint. Um, patients and their families are still trapped in that old viewpoint too. They can read the internet and when you offer them a drug that's not going to be curative but might offer them improved quality of life, it's almost apologetic. Um, physicians are also still learning how to use these new drugs. First of all, many physicians are still, if you don't achieve a complete remission, you have nothing. And many physicians haven't fully learned how to use these new drugs. And so the most common reason for azacitidine failure is not enough cycles of azacitidine. So there's a learning required at multiple levels. From the point of view of payers, hospitals and provincial payers in Canada, for example, similar learning is required. The provincial payers are still trapped in if you don't have an overall survival advantage, you have nothing, or if you don't achieve CR, you have nothing. And also for newer technologies, such as basing CR response on minimal residual disease, that testing is not generally available everywhere across the country, and even if it is available, it's generally not cent centralized, so one person's MRD is not the same as the other person's MRD, and in many places this is considered a research test, and so it's not funded clinically. And so taking all these things together, the challenges, patient and family, regulators, physicians, and finally the payers um, in the individual provinces, uh, these challenges are quite considerable. Over time, however, it looks as if things are getting better. And I would say if we were to do this talk again in five years, I would, I would hope that most of these problems have gone away.